Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about survival, surviving the recession. So if you're in business, thinking about getting into business, or you've been in business for a long, long time, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Five years of content, uh, anywhere podcasts are, and also on YouTube. And if you don't know me, my name is Jersey, and I am a rep with windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource. And if you haven't found us and you're in window cleaning, you're living under a rock. But I hope you do. We're the best window cleaning supply house in the world, according to me. I am also a rep, so that means that you can place your orders through me, and that's how I make my cheddar. So if you ever feel like you want to be amazing, if you want to be one of the cool kids, then let me put your orders in. My number is 862-312-2026. By the way, we're on V3, version 3, of the limited Cool Kids sticker. If you want a Cool Kids sticker, you put your order in through me, shoot me a text, and be like, yo, Send me a sticker, man. Put my order in. It's in my cart. It costs you nothing extra. Not only do you get the most amazing sticker in all the world, showing the world that you're cool, but uh, you help me out. I make cheddar from it. So anyway, there you go. Shameless plug, of course. Uh, Shameless plug number two is there is a magazine called the American Window Cleaning Magazine. American Window Cleaner Magazine. The greatest window cleaning magazine the planet has ever seen. And I own that. (laughs) I love helping people. I love that people get something out of it. And I want you to be part of the magazine. Uh, If you haven't gotten your subscription yet, please do so. Just go to awcmag.com, the American Window Cleaner, awcmag.com. Get a subscription. It is a real paper magazine. comes to your door every single month, and it comes with amazing stickers. Every single month, you get awesome, awesome stickers. Custom window cleaning stickers you can put on all your stuff. Anyway, go nerd out. Be absolutely amazing. Be an epic cool kid. That means put your orders in through me and get the magazine. And uh, yeah, just just do it. Just do it, man. Just do it. Anyway, today on Nation, we're talking about surviving the recession. Now, no doom and gloom. I'm not telling you there's a recession coming and things are going to be terrible. I'm not telling you that. But I had an interesting thing that was brought up to me. Really actually interesting. It was why did businesses, some businesses, not make it through COVID? And then because of this swing, now if things slow down, like will some businesses not make it through a recession? And the answer is absolutely yes. COVID did a really, really good job of weeding out the 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 businesses that weren't strong. Now, I gotta say, if you're not in business, you close your doors because COVID ruined you, I'm pretty sure you're not watching this show. So anybody who's watching this show has a business, either started since then or made it through there. And there is something to be said for that if you are a a survivor of 2020. If you're a survivor, you know that poo hit the fan Confusion happened and uh, chaos for about two months until we were deemed, you know, uh, necessary. I forget the word. Um, but after that, people all worked from home. And then as soon as they worked from home, they were like, oh, yeah, my windows are awful. And then we had tons of work. So, But before that, we lost a lot, a lot of customers uh, that were businesses just for that reason. I never like to see anybody go out. But there's a few things that happen, and you can take that, that whole COVID crap 2020, and apply that or lessons to a recession, if a recession's coming. I'm not going to get political. I'm just not. But we're all small business owners, so we're all usually on the same side, political side. But the economy is so absolutely awful right now. And yet we're still cleaning. So even in a recession, there is a market for what we do. We are a luxury business. A person who is paying for luxury services usually would continue to pay for luxury services. If you do route work, 
or if you're listening to Steve-O, who's wrong, it's Root. But if you're doing that, you're going to have, you're going to get a hit. There's a lot of that stuff where they need to cut some costs because they're just not making enough. They need to make some kind of profits or they close the doors. I get that. But a lot of times there's still the work out there for us to do what we do. There's, there's a lot of opportunity, even in a down economy, even in a crappy economy, a recession. I mean, listen, without boring you, we were at 9% inflation. That's terrible. That means 9%, your dollar cost or, or is 9% less than it was. That's, I mean, literally a tenth of your dollar. Your dollar is only worth 90 cents now. I mean, that's off, but be like 90%, 91 cents or something. Think about that. Your dollar that's in your pocket is worth 91 cents. That means that if you saved money from last year to now, you lost 9%. If you took $100,000, put it in the bank a year ago, they were paying you 2%. That means you lost 7% by putting it in the most secure thing out there bank account you're only making two percent but at least you're not losing yes you are you lost seven percent of your money okay doom and gloom done there's a way that we can kind of like focus on that learn from that and kind of survive the recession if one comes and the way to figure that out is to look back at why companies didn't make it through say covid covid was like a recession but instantly I started my company way back when and went through the 2008 recession, housing boom or a collapse and bubble. That was the terms then we're all popping the bubble. Or, oh, the bubble's going to pump. And then it did. And then everybody pooped themselves and uh, I lost a ton of work. Now, I would like to say I should have been more prepared as anybody uh, but I was relatively prepared. And um, to give you an example, uh, I lost four car or four car dealerships in one week. Four different ones called me and said, hey, I know we're getting our windows done. Uh, two of them are weekly and two of them are biweekly. So a lot of work. Yeah, we're just, we can't do it right now. Lost them all together. Not just like changed. Like at the time, that was like a ton, a ton of money. That was like, Three, four, five, six. That was like twelve hundred dollars a month I lost in a week, about, in car dealerships alone. This is back in two thousand eight. Twelve hundred dollars, a lot of money back then. Depending, that was early in the business. A lot, a lot of money. That's a lot of money to lose, for anybody. That was one batch, one week. That means all the other people that were dropping was like, I don't even know where to go with all this, right? But let's look at. The COVID crap. I hate the word. Don't use it as an excuse. We're back. We're doing what we're doing. You made it through there because you're stronger than the other guys. And I'm not here to poop on somebody who lost their company, but there's a lot of things that go through that, right? But let's look at why a company dies. Why a company who's doing awesome closes their doors a few months later. There's a lot of things, but here's the part is if you're taking a company, your company has uncertainty regardless. That's why we're all kind of uh, gray and, and old looking. I'm only 21 years old. Look how old I look. Look at all those wrinkles. Jeez. Ugh. High def cameras, right? Um, if you're on YouTube. If you're on, if you're on uh, listening to this as a podcast, I look great. Don't worry about it. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but there's a lot of stress because we don't know, right? With why a company dies is because the company itself was not secure as a company. There are restaurants that are like this. There are mortgage places that are like this. There are every kind of business. There are businesses in that genre who on paper look really, really good. And I'm telling you, if you've ever been part of Facebook groups, you've seen companies who are doing really, really good. Look at all these money I'm making. Oh my gosh, here's a picture of this big check I got. Ah. But the real truth is that there are always companies who are not doing good. Mismanaged is a big one. 
mismanage covers a whole lot of different things, right? That covers the planning. It covers the uh, budgets, your financial side, your cash flow, your expenses. It covers everything mismanaged is the reason a company fails. A company 100% of the time will fail because it was mismanaged. You go, no, there's sometimes you you have as min No. Because here's the thing. If you're complacent in a company and something happens, you don't change, or the stupid word I don't even want to say, but pivot. You just follow the path that you were in. Like I'm gonna start walking straight, right? I got a compass. And right now I pull my compass out and I go east. And no matter what happens around me, I walk east. I will eventually drown because I'm going to hit a pond or a lake or a bog or something, right? I'm going to get hit by a car. I'm going to, all the things that could happen if I only go east. But if I say, I want to go east, but as soon as I go to the edge of a pond, I walk around the pond. I notice that there is an issue or a hazard or something I need to change my course. I change my course. I don't drown. I could even see it and step in it and go, yeah, that's going to be too deep. And then go around. I may have wet ankles, but I still went around it. Even if I changed course earlier, I changed course late. If I see that pond from really far away, all I have to do is take one step to my left. And eventually I'm going to change my course enough to go around it. The longer out I see the, the, the pivot, the easier it is for me to go. If I walk right to it and I walk straight up to it and I stop at the shore... I have to make a 90 degree turn to pivot around the thing, right? A stupid analogy, I know, but listen, that is management. The companies like Blockbuster out there did not survive, not because no one's buying videotapes, because guess what? People eventually bought DVDs. Well, nobody's buying DVDs anymore. No, they're not, but they're streaming. As things change, it would change. Hulu exists. Netflix exists, all these other channels exist. If Blockbuster pivoted, saw the pond, and changed, they would have gotten into DVDs, which I worked at Blockbuster, by the way. <laughs> I remember DVDs coming out, and like people come in and go, yeah, where are your DVDs? We, said, we don't have them. We got into DVDs so late that people were already past it. Well, they could call Netflix at the time, sent you DVDs in the mail. They didn't send VHSs. We still were selling VHSs. Well, by that time we made the change, it was gone. Then there was Blockbuster who tried to send you DVDs just like the other one. They're like, no, Netflix is here. They're way more established as this type of company. Like, They did not pivot and they just couldn't get the footing. They're already in the pond and they couldn't make enough of a turn and they drowned. And they closed. Remember, when Blockbuster was around, it was in every single town in the country. I mean, you could go out in the middle of nowhere and you'd find a Blockbuster. It was the Dollar Generals of the time but they didn't change what they did. Management drowned them. That's why a company dies. You're the management, so if you didn't drown, you're the reason you succeeded, right? We need to plan for that poo storm, right? We have to look at it and go, okay, something could happen. No, you can't predict a COVID. You can't predict a, a, a recession collapse in half a minute. I mean, you could sort of maybe say, well, I think something's kind of... But you can't. But as soon as you realize that it will come, your contingency is in, so you can make that change. Right? It's like seeing the, 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 the pond. It may be foggy, and you may not see it right until the last second, but you already have. You already know that if I see a pond, I'm going to go left. You don't have to see it. Oh, gosh, and then keep walking. Go, well, there's the pond, but what am I supposed to do? Then you're in the pond. By the way, this may get the uh, analogy for most longest run, or uh, this may win the award for longest running analogy in a show. But you see what I'm saying. Understand you have to plan for a poo storm. All that means, you don't have to plan an exact strategy, right? If you know how you're going to get out of your house in a fire, you just know kind of what you're doing. Hey, if there's a fire, everybody go this way. What they say is if that is also on fire, then everybody goes this way, right? But eventually, even a good plan can go bad because the things that you plan for can't happen. So we're not talking about figuring out, well, COVID's going to happen. No, we're talking about being able to plan for that. 
there's a lot of stuff to be able to plan for that, a contingency to make it happen, right? Putting that all out there is is pretty uh, pretty different between people and stages. But if you plan for the poo storm, you have to see what you can do in the future. And a lot of that's going to be what we're talking about in a second. One other thing that I do want to talk about is the fear that companies have is also why they left. As a manager, I had people who were running a good company and they said, oh man, I don't know what's going on. I'm getting, I'm working at a box factory. I don't know. You have too much fear. You can't work on your company if you left your company, right? If I go and, you know, if I get shot in my leg and the person who's standing next to me goes, oh, all right, I'm going to go over here. Well, I will eventually die. You're not giving me any attention. But if I got people around me, they could probably help. They'd probably save my life. Maybe a long recovery, but I could be saved. Same thing with a company. Don't let fear let you jump over the edge. Don't let fear make you leave what you're doing because of that. Just something on fear. By the way, if you're like, yeah, I don't really fear anything. Think about everything we do in our day. You go to work at a certain time. You created those uh, jobs from nothing. You have maybe staff. You maybe are paying for, you know, food on yourself. Like everything you've done, you've done, you've created yourself. If you don't have that, that comfort or that, that understanding that you're awesome, the fear will win. Well, it's getting hard. I better. That's why 90% of businesses leave. Why they close. A, mismanagement is always it. But that manager goes, oh, it's getting pretty tough. Oh, I'm not going to lose money of money here. Well, guess what? I've lost money before. You've lost money before. We do this. We don't have the fear. And that's what makes it better. That's what makes us as, as strong as, as we are in business. Don't have the fear. Or at least don't act on it. You can have fear. You can be scared of heights, but you still don't freeze up. You can be scared of birds. It doesn't mean you don't go outside. You can be scared of, of you know, wolves eating your children, but it doesn't mean you don't go on hikes. You may prepare for those, but it doesn't mean you let fear dictate what you do. If you do, it won. Fear is just a thing that your brain thinks about. Anything your brain thinks about is not a reality. If I'm worried about something, I'm the only person, humans are the only thing that worries. There's no elephant out there like, oh, I'm walking and eating grass. They wake up and they go start eating. They, they, they go to sleep somewhere that they're like, no, oh, I'll sleep here. I shouldn't get eaten. Right? A lion comes into their thing and they're like, oh, man, well, better scare them away. Humans are the only ones that worry. Humans are the only ones that have irrational fears. People are scared of bees. People are scared of spiders. What? How can you be scared of a spider but yet still get behind the wheel of a car? How many people die of spiders in the U.S. a year? How many people die of auto accidents a year? I digress. Irrational fears. I have kids, by the way, and my daughter doesn't like bugs, one of them, and I am, like, dumbfounded that I uh, can't help her get past her fear of bugs. They're bugs. Anyway. All right. So we know all that's there. The biggest thing that you can look at for the mismanagement side is overextending yourself. Overextending yourself in business, there's a couple versions of that, right? And now if we don't do this, we're preparing ourselves for crap. That could be recession. That could be COVID. That could be monkeypox or whatever stupid things coming along, right? What that means, what that actually means, by overextending yourself can be financial, right? Not saying don't invest in your company, get new trucks or whatever, but getting to that point where it's like, oh man, I'm like not really doing anything profit-wise because I got to do, maybe it's not time for that, right? If your profit margins aren't high enough and you're worried about, you know, uh, a fee or a, a thing or you know if gas prices go up and you're like oh my gosh this is going to crush my business you're overextended you're doing it wrong <laughs> you're you're having a a mental block right a mental block about gas does it suck yeah 
you know, a gallon of milk also costs twice as much as it did. There's a lot of things that can suck, but they shouldn't affect you. It's really hard to get trucks right now. It's really expensive to get trucks right now. I know a guy, uh, Chris Cartwright, actually. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't Chris Cartwright. Uh, throwing names out. It was another guy. Uh, actually, it was Steve. Steve, the window cleaner. Steve-o. Um, but he had uh, a van. And he had a van and a truck and was just using the van for work and just the truck for, for home. And uh, he was reading something that he could get, uh, I think it was like $5,000 could be more could be less five thousand dollars more than he paid for his van two years ago if he traded it in which is mind-blowing because that means somebody else is buying their vehicle ten thousand dollars more than they could two years ago so he's like well, i don't need two vehicles he got rid of the vehicle and made that money vehicles are expensive he's also pivoting at the perfect time to do what he's doing to secure that if work changes and he loses out on that extra bonus the vehicles go back down to pricing wise he didn't need the extra vehicle but now he's paying for that extra vehicle and things change now he's got an expense right overextending yourself can be financial but it can be capabilities almost more than not it's capabilities it's where people go well i started my business last month i got a guy who is calling me for 64 uh buildings that are all uh 25 stories and uh it's just me working and uh yeah i'm gonna throw a bit at it man it could be i could it's a it's a two million dollar contract yeah I could, I could make two million no that's overextending yourself you can't do that work no nah, no nah, i just gotta hire like 60 people get trained in high rise Start these jobs within two weeks. Make sure my insurance is up to par. And they all have to do perfect work. That's all. Two million dollars. Boom. That's overextending yourself. Overextending yourself puts you into a position of failure. You go and have this giant thing. You've just hired 60 people, hypothetically, to do these projects. Everything's gone. There's no management. These people are ruining things. You're losing people left and right. Not only do you lose this contract... But if there's fines in place, depending on what type of municipality you're working for, there could be timing fines. Not only are you not making anything, you've paid all these employ, employ, uh, employees to do the work, you've gotten them trained, you paid for all that, now you're $100,000 in the hole, you don't have the contract, and now you're a new company with no employees and $100,000 in the hole, you close. Overextending yourself is the reason that if you're running the line so tight that any little thing happens like COVID, which wasn't little, but you know what I'm saying. Now all of a sudden, it's done. I can't survive that. I was overextended. COVID happened. Well, I don't have enough cash reserves to, to pay my guys the money. Oh, we didn't have any work. Like, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't survive that. That was your failure. How do you not have cash reserves for that? Overextending is going out there and and buying a motorcycle even though you know you're scraping pennies together to finish payroll that week if anything happens and you're carrying the stack of a thousand plates when one drops everything drops right don't overextend yourself now you can't predict how long you need to like everybody's you know if you're a, a prepper and you got you know six months of food or something there uh what happens if it's uh you know six months in a day right what happens if uh there's water damage and everything that six months you have just wasn't there like you can't prepare for everything you can't have six months plus a backup six months because but having that option and preparing for something and preparing for the most things that could happen to be covered for is how you survive a difficult time overextending yourself to the point where you have zero extra on anything sucks right? Say you got, your guys are each working 50 hours a week because you just won't hire somebody new. Their equipment doesn't work. They're running super stiff. Well, now, now they're getting pissed and two guys decide to leave. You have an extra 100 hours of work that you're supposed to divvy up. It can't happen. Now you're losing all those customers because you can't get to work. You can't get new customers. So your business slows down that year. You make less money, less growth. You stop all of that potential all because you were running too tight. You weren't planning. You overextended yourself. Overextending yourself in any case is tough.
because there's a catch-22. You need the hours to hire the help, but you need the help to do the hours, right? If you're doing, you are by yourself, you don't have employees and you're working 40 hours a week, it's very hard to hire somebody and go, well, we're going to give you 40 hours a week because then there's nothing left, right? So I understand there's a catch-22, but the closest possibility in understanding the concepts is more important. And with all that being said, if you've ever talked to me, you know that I am a very big choose positive over negative kind of guy, right? I really am. But you have to do the same. Don't focus on the bad, right? Dumb analogy number like 38. When you're driving your car, your windshield is this big. It's big. But you have a rear view mirror. It's just little, right? If you were driving and they wanted you to look behind you, to look what you've passed, to look what you've made it through, that rear view mirror would be bigger than the windshield. But they make that so you look forward. You look at what's coming, the new stuff. You can still look at behind you, but you're not focused on it. Don't focus on the bad. If you focus on the bad and everything's all terrible, you're going to kill yourself in general with, uh, with, with stress and heart attacks and everything else. You're focused on it. Focusing on the negative does not mean you don't think it exists. Focusing on the negative does not mean you're not planned for it or something or some kind of planning is better than nothing surviving a recession is as important as surviving a virus is surviving a family death and still trying to get through is surviving a lawsuit to your company is surviving an unexpected tax bill is surviving fill in the blank you can make up any story you want if you're prepared to some degree You will survive any of it, a recession, all of it. If you get a letter from the IRS randomly on a Tuesday, says, hey, two years ago, hypothetically we'll say 2019, I don't know, maybe speaking from experience and something I just got. But anyway, you owe us $20,000. It's due by December 31st. What? What happened? Oh, you forgot to file the form W-2 or whatever. I don't know forms. If you're not prepared, if you're overextended, if you're anything, you're not going to pay them. And now they're running judgments and liens and now you have tax debt and they're fining and penalizing you on top of that. If you're set, prepared for something to happen, your preparedness... When something does happen, you can cover it. If you get an unexpected tax bill, you're not preparing for unexpected unexpected tax bills because you didn't you didn't you did everything you thought was right anyway. It's like crashing one of your work trucks. If one of your guys crashes your work truck, hopefully they're okay. But now you're out of vehicle. Well, you didn't plan on that crashing and being out. You didn't have a brand new van sitting, right? You don't plan for it, but you plan for any possibilities that can cover that. That's all I'm saying. That's how you survive a pandemic. That's how you survive a recession. That's why your company will do better than the next guys. By the way, if you want to be better than the guy next to you, get the uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine, AWC. Uh, AWCMAG.com. Really go and get a subscription. I really genuinely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if you would go and get a subscription. It would be amazing. Also, if you want to be a cool kid, which we all do, mm-hmm. uh, put your orders in through me. Only the coolest put their orders in through me. And I know you want to be the coolest. So put your orders in. Let me know. I'll shoot you out a special limited edition Cool Kid sticker so that all your friends can see, yeah, you bought your jersey. Uh, you have a guy, right? Like you have an insurance guy and a bagel guy or what? <laughs> Stupid things we have in our world. Why not have a supply guy? I want to be your supply guy. So 862-312-2026. Sorry for all the analogies. Sorry for my crappy uh, plugs. But that's how I make my money. So anyway, until next week there, you're going to survive the recession. Plan everything out. But more importantly, be epic. <laughs>